Well, hello and welcome to Transform Tuesday. My name is Dave McCormick. I'm VP of Product Management here at Alpha Software. And today I'll be going over a couple of new things in Transform. Well, perhaps not all that new. Actually, we've got some questions on some stuff that is actually Transform programming language related that I'd like to go over. Uh, but I'm also here to answer your questions. So if you do have any questions, go ahead and type them into the questions box of the GoToWebinar control panel. Joining me today also is Sarah Mitchell, who's in charge of documentation. If you do have documentation related questions, uh, she is here as a resource for you as well. So let's get started. Um, before I begin, actually, just want to confirm that uh, people can see my screen and that they can hear the audio, just say all is okay, or I can hear you or whatever into the questions box. There we are. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. Okay, so I'm going to jump right down here in my presentation all the way down here to slide 66, I think is what I want. Here it is. And we're just going to go over a quick what is TPL because um, a lot of you on the call today know what it is, but I'm just going to do a quick review. We have some new people and, it, and we don't talk a lot about it on the website. We certainly don't go over it in the um, uh, the tutorial that comes with uh, Transform. So we, we are left with a lot of people saying, wow, I didn't even know Alpha Transform had a programming language bef behind it um, that I can use. So what's it do? How do I get to it and all that? So I'm just going to go over this real quickly. And then we're going to go and uh, take a look at one particular function that I think you'll find very useful in uh, upcoming apps. And that is the in-app browser function in Transform and TPL. So let's go ahead and get started. So Transform TPL is a traditional programming language, but it's tuned to the needs of Transform. So it only has those functions and expressions and things that you need to work with Alpha Transform. It is similar to JavaScript, but it is different than JavaScript for two reasons. First of all, JavaScript can propose a certain amount of security risks when it's added into an application, and we built Transform with security in mind. So by having our own language, we're able to, to lock down some of the things that you can and can't do. The second thing is that we did not want to, since we knew we couldn't allow everything to happen in uh, TPL, uh, we didn't want people to try importing libraries or things like that, things that would just clearly break the system. So we wanted to create something that was, again, it's similar to JavaScript. It's similar to probably any other programming language that you know. Um, it doesn't take long to pick it up. And the best part is, in most cases, you're just going to be working with, with snippets of code. You'll be just grabbing uh, sections of code, perhaps that someone else have, has written to do something you want and make changes to that. Um, so, but let's go into that in a little bit more detail. So here's some examples of what people are using TPL for. They're using it to look up uh, data from an onboard database. Uh, as some of you know, you can actually store a SQLite database available for offline use right on the device and TPL and Transform can work with that. And you do that using the Transform programming language. You can also perform AJAX callbacks. I know I've given an example of that recently. I think I did a weather example. So you can have a TPL make a callback to a server and pick up a piece of information from a web service and bring it back into Transform for your use. Another common use is to perform calculations. And that is, uh, for example, you might be multiplying length times width to get an area or quantity times price to get the extended price. This last thing actually is, is no longer the case. And we will go over styling in a future episode, but we are not going to be using TPL for doing that, although you can conditionally style things. But we're going to actually talk about that in a future session. Let me just remove that. And then lastly, you can add buttons to perform custom actions, which in other words, you can wire up uh, uh, a workflow or in today's example, an in in-app browser to that fires when you press a button. All right. So here are a couple of examples. Uh, you can build out a function. In this case, we took function, we said field five, which is here, is what is field three plus field four and field one. And you can just build out these little simple functions. Now, when we first started building TPL, you had to do this all in this sort of complex JSON file. But now we actually have got a built-in real code editor in the product. And I'm going to show you how to get to that. Since two people asked me this week, how do I get to the code editor in Transform? So I'll make sure I cover that. 
Also on the device side, on the client side, there is a debugger, which I'm gonna show you today, that you can go through and take a look at the functions that you've included uh, for debugging purposes. You know, Why did that function not give me back the value I thought it was going to give me? Well, you can find out what's going on directly right inside the client side debugger, which is a really super helpful tool. Um, let me see if there's anything else I wanna show you. I'll talk a little, we'll come back to these slides in a moment. And we'll talk about buttons in a moment. So actually, let's let's just get started right now, right in Transform itself. I am going to pop over here to Transform, where I have created a really simple Transform application, and it's called In-App Browser. And you probably can't get simpler than this, because it only has one control on it, and it's a button. And that button is called launch. Now, while I was performing, while I was setting this up today, I was I was getting some unexpected behavior with my button, and I wanna just go over that real quickly. Um, so would like me to maximize my window. Sure, I can maximize the window if that's helpful to you. Uh, you might also, um, if you wanna see things closer, uh, it doesn't get bigger when I maximize, it just gives you us more space, but um, you can definitely use, go to webinars, got a magnification option in it, so you should be able to drill in, but I hopefully won't make you read too much code here off the screen here today. So back to this transform thing, I just, like I said, I just have one control in it and it's called launch. When I added this button, which I did just by clicking the add new command, and I scrolled down and I chose action button, here it is. And I typed in, okay, uh, my button, for example, is the text that's going to appear in that button. I'm just going to move that out of the way. And you'll see that, whoop, there it is right here. Now, by default, you would think that it would give this button some sort of internal name. This is actually like its field name, its internal field name. But right now it looks like that's left blank. So this is very important that you actually fill this in and I'll let me just do it the wrong way and I'll show you why. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save commands and I've got two buttons, one is called launch and one is called my button. And I'm gonna go ahead and save and I will upload it to the server. Now let's take a look inside the uh, the TPL that's behind this. So to get to the TPL editor, uh, what you do is you first choose the form where you want to edit the TPL. And then, so what you'll see is something that looks like this. It'll say basic info, and then you'll have an advanced features section. What you wanna do in advanced features is you wanna open up advanced features, and then you wanna click enable custom code for this form type. By default, it's set to no. You wanna click that to yes. When you click that to yes, this link here becomes enabled, this edit custom code link. And it's by clicking on the edit custom code link that we get our, uh, we get our editor, our code editor. Now, in the code editor section, now that we have it open, we have three panels here. The panel on the left shows us the controls that are in our form. Now controls will often have, in the case of a button, you just have one event, but in the case of a field, you'll often have two events that you can attach code to. And I'll go back and show you an example of that in a minute. Right now, there's just one place where we can attach code and a button, it's just simply called button. So I'm gonna click with my mouse on this little green button here. I'm gonna show you a bit of code that I had entered in before. So it says on button launch, perform this action and then end the on. And I'll get into what that action is here in a second. So here's the thing that I want you to look out for though. Remember, we forgot to name our button in the other example. If I click on button here, it says on button underscore and I can probably type something in whatever, I think this code here is probably fine. I'm gonna click save. And notice, this isn't green, meaning it doesn't know that there's some button behind it. That was my first clue that there was something wrong. But the fact is that there really needs to be a name here after that. And to do that, I need to go back to, uh, I'm going to do not save changes on that. I'm gonna go back to my in-app browser and under my button, I'm gonna give it a name, my button. And now when I'm back in the code editor, I should be able to edit code. I forget what I need to do it for a comment. Let's just do that though. 
and you'll see that it's lit up green so that I've done I've done it correctly. When it's lit up green here, it just means that there's some code assigned behind it. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that though. Oops. Let's just delete that. All right, and save. All right, I'm actually going to restore this window. I'm going to make it about this size. Come on. There we go. Okay. So the other thing I wanted to show you here was this uh, in-app browser function. And I want to give you a little warning. So today is March 5th, 2019. As of today, in-app browser works like this. If you're watching this video, say, three months from now, six months from now, please do look in the documentation. I think that we have some plans to make some changes to, to either add functionality or perhaps even change functionality. But right now, today, this is how it works. If you use the in-app browser command, let me see if I can make that a little bigger on the screen so you guys can see it. Oh, here we go. Yeah. In app browser, open paren, and then in double quotes, you can put in a URL. And I bet a lot of you know where I'm headed with this. If you then run this, what it will do is it will open up a browser and it will take you to the link that you see here. Now, in this case, I decided to have it point to an online PDF file. So let's imagine the use case of I'm out in the field. I do have signal, but I want to be able to look up, say, a PDF manual or something for a for a piece of equipment, perhaps, that I'm repairing. So let's, uh, let me show you how that works on the phone. Go ahead and mirror my phone. Okay. And here I am in transform. So I'm gonna click add form. And I'm gonna choose the in-app browser form that I just created. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the launch button and you'll see what's happened is it's opened up a browser and it's loaded in this PDF document. In this case, it is the Alpha Transform User's Guide that it's loaded up, but obviously it could be any, any website. And the other thing that you can do, which is interesting, I'll show you this in a minute, is you could pass it along with parameters and those parameters could come from field names. So for example, you could open up a, a website that shows you a location on the map, say with Google Maps and you could pass in a latitude and longitude. I believe Nikos actually demonstrated that in that. It certainly is in his demo app, and I'll show that to you in a minute. So just to show you that that works, it does. I'm gonna go ahead and close, shut off mirroring now. Stop mirroring. All right, let's go back to, uh, it's fine, I don't know if I made any change of it, that's fine. Okay, so, ah, sorry, there is one other thing I wanna show you with the phone open, so let me just start screen mirroring again. And that is, here I put transform, come on, here it is. One thing, when you're done with the, uh, when you're done with the in-app browser, it's the bottom left corner, there's a done button. That's gonna vary from Android to iOS, but there's a, but there is a way of having it work in each each version. And now I'm gonna go here and I'm going to use the debugger. You probably can see here on my screen that I've got a, a little thing which says debug, this little uh, button here. And I was able to turn that on from within the help system. Let me show you how that works. First of all, I had to leave the form that I'm on. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap the hamburger menu up at the top left and I'm going to choose help, first option. And then under help, I'm gonna say show table of contents, okay? As I scroll down, there is a part of the table of contents called tools for support. And it has a bunch of different tools here, but the one that we're interested in is the debugger tool. So right now at the bottom, you could say set debug state to either shown or to hidden. Obviously I have it set to shown right now. If I have it set to hidden, it disappears. I'm gonna click shown, it reappears. Okay, so I've got that on. Now, while I'm in my form, let me go back into the uh, in-app browser form. I can press this debug button again, and it will open up the debugger. And in the debugger right now, I'm looking at the code, the TPL code that I have written in here before. If you remember, we, this is our in-app browser command. And I can actually run this right from within the, 
right uh, right from here from the debugger and I'll do that by choosing the function I want from the hamburger menu at the bottom right I'm going to choose run function and then there are my list of functions I'm going to click on button launch and if I've done this right click to take a couple of clicks or do I have to hit the play button That's weird, that is not, oh, sorry, I had to double click. I don't know why I had to double tap, but you have to double tap. Uh, it, it then runs the function and there it's opened up. It's gone to open up the browser and it's gone to that PDF file again. So that's the in-app browser. The in-app browser has a couple other cool features. Let me just jump back to that in the PowerPoint presentation. Let me show off mirroring here. All right, and up here. So this is the client side debugger. Uh, I showed you the hamburger menu. That's a very important one. You, use, you could choose uh, particular functions that you want to run. That is the actual run function button. That's what I should have clicked on before. Once you choose one here, you choose that to run the function. And those are the debugger controls. If you need to step through a particular function a step at a time, you can. And then down here is where it shows you what the values are for the different fields and variables that you have set up. So you can see what's changed as a function runs. So all of that is down here in the debugger controls. And um, that, there isn't much to it beyond that. I believe we do have documentation on it as well, but I just wanted to give you sort of the, a quick overview. All right, so I've shown you a pretty simple example but of the in-app browser, but what I didn't show you was in-app browser with something a little bit more complicated, and that is passing in some values. So I'm going to actually not use my example. I'm going to go ahead and use Nikos's example, which he showed off a few weeks ago. So he did a good job there. Let me just find it. Equipment inspection, here it is. So here is the equipment inspection form. A copy of this form and the data behind it is available to you. If you would like, just send an email to guides, uh, sorry, TF service, as in transform service at alphasoftware.com, and I'd be happy to get you the source code for you. If you saw the webinar with this, you probably got an email with the links to that already. So let's go ahead and edit the custom code for this particular form type. And we'll see, he's got a bunch of controls. Mine only had one or two controls, but it's a, a more substantial example. And one of the things that he has is navigate to site and weather forecast. So let's click on navigate to site. The purpose behind this button was to take the latitude and longitude readings that were previously captured or entered into the application and to display those latitude and longitude uh, uh, on a map using a map marker in a browser. So if we take a look at the code, and I'll make this code bigger. So this is what we've done. Whoops. All right, that's that's crazy. That's a little too big. Let me slow that down. Okay. We said on button navigate. So in other words, we clicked on this button here, and it brought us to this code. We've set a variable to, called latlon, and we've set that equal to the value of the latitude field. So fields in, in TPL are prefaced with a hashtag. So if you created a field on a form, you can get that value just with hashtag and then the name of the field. Then we are concatenating a comma, and we're concatenating the longitude. And so we've taken the field value of latitude, longitude, we've stuck a comma in between, and we've stuck it into this variable called latlon. Now in the in-app browser, we open up google.com slash map slash search slash h1 equals, in this case, English, and API equals, and then number one, you're going to need to replace this if you want to use this example with your own API key from Google. So you need to go to Google and get an API key. You won't be charged anything for it, but I do think you have to have a credit card number to supply one nowadays. Might be wrong about that. After that, it's uh, you enter in the uh, in the uh, the URI. We keep going with and query equals, and then we and Latin lawn, uh, which is that that variable that we have here. And the upshot is when you have a a latitude longitude and you click that button, it's going to open up a browser and it's going to show that to you on the map. And you guys can try this out for yourself with your own copy of this, but you just need to get a Google API key first. Another one he had in his uh, 
was a button that would show you the weather forecast for that same Latin lawn. Very, very similar idea. We've created a Latin lawn variable. We've uh, used the field uh, uh, latitude and longitude to create, uh, in this case, it looks like it's a slightly different format for the service. And then we've called on forecast.weather.gov, this little PHP file, and we've passed in that variable. And it will actually open up a browser and it will show you the weather forecast. You don't need an API key for this one, which is cool. And I tried this one out uh, earlier today on my phone and it does work. So that's that's worth messing around with. All right, let's see what else I want to cover here today. We've covered the how to get to the TPL editor. So again, you do that by, let me just shrink this back down again. So you get to the TPL editor uh, first by selecting the form you want in the designer tab, opening up advanced features, enabling custom code for this form type, clicking yes to that, and then clicking the edit custom code button. You can enable uh, the debugger on the phone, likewise, in the help system, which I showed you how to do a moment ago. Um, and when you're creating new action buttons, it's really important to make sure that you give them a name or any code behind it will not work. Uh, and then the last caveat is that in-app browser may change. So if you're watching this live today, it's gonna work for you today. But if you're watching this uh, recording, say a month or two or three or four from now, do check the documentation before, before you become frustrated with my example here today. So uh, I think that that is it. Um, Let's see if there's anything else. Uh, will the... Okay, so let me see if we have any questions. And I'm taking a look at questions right now. Um, will the debugger on the device it expose all the code? For example, the API keys. Yes, yes it will. Uh, so is debug a safety hazard if you hand it to people out in the field? It is. Um, I will look into, I think that we have the ability now to disable that so that only certain users are able to turn on the debugger. If we don't have that, it's certainly a feature that we're going to add. So that's a really good question. And yes, it would have the, it would have the API keys right in there. Do we have any other questions? Well, that looks like it. I was hoping to have, or I hope to have Nikos back again, maybe next week, or maybe the, well, hopefully the week after, where he's built this really interesting management console add-on. It's called a, uh, a sidecar application that works with Alpha Transform, which lets you do a lot more things than our current management console lets you do, like you know, do you know, proper searches for records, uh, deal with large numbers of records, uh, and other things as well. I think he also has some easier ways of assigning records to people if you want to build a dispatch application. So that'll be coming up shortly. In the meantime, though, if you need uh, if you need anything, please send an email to tfservice at alphasoftware.com. We're happy to answer any questions or provide examples or point you to documentation or anything else you need. So hey, thanks a lot, everyone, for attending. And I hope to see you next Tuesday. Take care and have a great week. Bye-bye.